I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. There's nothing like cleaning out your attic or a storage unit to offer a chance to really reflect on your life. I'm currently enjoying this opportunity as I dig through boxes holding decades of accumulation. It takes a lot longer if you stop and ponder on the contents of every box, as I tend to do. Several of mine were full of books written 40 to 50 years ago. As I looked at them, I thought, you know, they were largely theory to me when I read them. They formed the foundation of my professional career. There are books like How You Can Become Financially Independent by Investing in Real Estate by Albert Lowry and How to Make $1 Million in Real Estate in Three Years Starting with No Cash by Tyler G. Hicks. I found scores of similar books on buying and selling real estate, along with the course manuals for hundreds of classes that I took regarding every nuanced real estate strategy known to man. I purchased my first house when I was 19 years old. It was an older two bedroom house with no closets on St. Cloud Street in Rapid City, South Dakota. The cost was around $12,500. I scraped together enough cash to make a small down payment since this was before I had learned how to purchase real estate without cash. I had just started my career selling real estate and I was living with my parents, so I rented out the house. I was really fortunate in finding a great tenant, a woman employed by the court system who ended up living in the house for many, many years. Despite the promise in Hicks' book, I didn't make a million dollars in three years. However, after 10 years, I had purchased rental real estate worth around a million dollars, largely with no cash. You could say I was highly leveraged. That time or around that time was when I discovered putting all my investment eggs in one asset class may not be the best thing to do. In the 1980s, the rental market in Rapid City fell apart with vacancy rates as high as 25%. I came apart with it. That's when I learned the painful truth of a statement from one of my early instructors. In the long run, real estate always ends up a good investment. The problem is you've got to be around for the long run. I realized that having some cash, stocks, and bonds on the side was a really good idea. So I stopped buying real estate as frequently as I had been purchasing it and began maximizing my IRA, which eventually became uh, simple, which you can uh, give a higher amount to, which eventually became a 401k, which you can put in even more. And then that got a money purchase pension plan wrapped on top of it. Through the years, and even with the struggle of the 1980s, the knowledge I acquired from the contents of all those boxes really served me well. As I sat in that storage unit and I looked at Lowry's book, I had a strange moment of realization. The goal that was so theoretical in my 20s had become a reality by my 60s. I had become financially independent by investing in real estate. My wife reminds me, you worked hard to make that independence happen. That is really true. I certainly have practiced what I've preached to clients. I also have been around for the long run, which has gone by surprisingly fast as I've been busy living it. Today I work not because I need to, but because I want to. That's a nice position to be in and one that I advocate for my clients. I did decide that it was time 
to get rid of books on investing in real estate. And as for that first little house on St. Cloud Street, well, I sold it long ago, using the profits to dive deeper into real estate. But the lessons that it taught me remain a permanent part of my portfolio. Thanks for listening.